Today we're going to be going into a free step-by-step -step Google Shopping course. Let's go. Hey everyone and welcome to today's video, a step-by-step -step guide for Google Shopping free course for beginners in 2019. If you don't know me, my name is Ricky Hayes. Don't forget to like today's video, subscribe and comment down below. Crush it to go on the chance to win a 30-minute call with myself scheduled in the next video okay so i give you all these tons of value you're gonna absolutely love let's jump straight into it so step one for google shopping you need some prerequisites and um, so you're gonna need a merchant center account okay so there's a link there you can get today's slides down below as well 100 percent free okay um so you need a merchant center account you need that to upload your products use the google shopping feed app which is a Shopify app you use to upload the products to the Merchant Center and you're going to need the keywords everywhere tool Now that's a bit more of a product research one Let me down know down below if you want to know a bit more about product research I have some more tips later in the video as well to help you out But those three tools are um, except for the Google Shopping feed app is $4.99 a month But trust me that app is fantastic. The support you get is huge it also works with Bing, which is also something that I am working on mainly in my course uh, right now. So, um, a few few things, housekeeping rules you need to understand about Google Shopping um, is it takes on average three to seven days for your products to be approved. Okay, so you're going to make your Merchant Center account. There's a lot of stuff you have to do on the back end. Um, and once your products are submitted and um, they're in a pending state, they take three to seven days. Google is very strict with the products that are allowed to be shown on the shopping network or just in general, Google um, will not permit uh, products that don't meet their guidelines. Okay, they're very, very strict. I should also add as well that you can get products approved and then they can be disapproved down the line based on um, manual audits or various changes in policies down the line. So always keep that in mind. Um, so the common reasons can be things like your tax, shipping, all of that not set up properly. So make sure you have that set up. Um, now as well, in order to run, then your um, once you have your Merchant Center set up, obviously you need to run uh, Google Ads because everything feeds into Google Ads. Always understand that with Google Ads, that everything is fed into Google Ads. So there's the Google Fire, there's Google... Um, tag managers Google Analytics there's Google Merchant Center Google 360 Google Optimize a ton of tools and they all pretty much pull data from uh, in push data into Google Ads and so on and so forth they all integrate so that's how it works so um, I recommend when you do set it up it's it's easiest to set up shopping um, and uh, your Merchant Center and Google Ads using the same email address makes it a lot easier. You can do it the other way anyway, but it just is a bit easier. So I would suggest doing that. Um, as a little additional pro tip, please make sure you have your billing set up correctly. I have had my uh, previous ad accounts uh, permanently banned um, when I've spent, I think like $1.30 and their bot um, banned me because apparently I didn't have a proper credit card enabled. Um, I don't know why. I've used it for tons of things and um, it banned it. I called them up and it, and it banned it. So make sure you have that set up. It also does accept PayPal. So if you don't have that, PayPal will always come through fine. So, um, and I've been starting to use PayPal and then bound to credit card, okay? So same thing, uh, because for some reason, Google and some services don't seem to like some credit cards, but if it goes through PayPal, then to your credit card, same end result, but yeah, it's just something I've learned um, the hard way. Um, really important as well, and this is a lot more descriptive in my course. Um, make sure that you have your site has your contact us, refund policy, privacy policy, returns policy, um, all in your footer um, in one place. Otherwise, your ads will be disapproved. So your ads will be disapproved and you won't even be able to run them. Um, Google is very explicit, as I said, with this um, across a number of other things. And there's a number of other areas as well you should be well aware of, and it can get you banned. Google ban people a lot more than Facebook and they won't reallocate your account, okay, or reinstate your account. You need to make a new ad account um, and that can get around it, but it then is quite a pain um, to, to work around it and you just have to start again. It's just really annoying. So 
make sure you have those set up. You should have those set up anyway. It's pretty standard on every website to have that. Um, but make sure you do have that set up as well. Um, I've even had other instances where Google has requested other things. The, admittedly, the good thing with Google is, is that they do actually provide uh, a phone number. You can actually call an international phone number um, up in the top right. Um, where your ad account is, there's usually a phone number. I don't believe it's actually for every country, funnily enough, but here in Australia, there's a number and you, they, they pick up in like two minutes. So it is actually a pretty good service they provide there. Um, so if you ever need support, that is, that's really, really handy. Uh, obviously, you're going to need to make sure you have your conversion tracking set up and configured. There are a number of ways to do this. You can do it uh, via um, the Google Shopping Feed app. Um, it'll do it for you. However, I've been doing it another way, uh, which is via Google Analytics, which is a, a it takes a little bit more initial setup, not really a huge amount, but um, it gives you a lot more control, okay, a lot more control, um, and it's so much more accurate. Um, and once you understand it, it's really easy. So make sure you have your conversion tracking set up. If you don't know how to, to do it, just use the Google Shopping Feed app. It does give you the option to set up your uh, your tag for your cold traffic conversion tracking and remarketing. It's important that you understand that Google works a bit different to Facebook with how it has conversion tracking. It has a lot more options for conversion tracking than Facebook um, as a whole, like a lot more. So make sure you keep that in mind. Uh, make sure you understand keyword research. So step three where it says keywords everywhere, you need to understand keyword research. Remember, if you don't understand keyword research with Google, you are going to struggle. Um, why? Because you think about it, if, if no one is seeing your ad, then how are you even going to get a sale? So Google, like with Facebook, Facebook guarantees impressions. Okay, we, we know with Facebook that you can guarantee impressions. That doesn't mean you're going to guarantee sale clicks or sales. With Google, you can't guarantee impressions. It's all around keyword research. Google don't do that for us. Or will they somewhat do if you do smart campaigns? But I pref I'm a bit of a control freak um, in the beginning anyway. And uh, you're going to have to do this anyway, especially for shopping. You need to know keyword research. Um, keyword research is the core of, of your marketing. And if you don't know keyword research and what keywords are you know, buyer intent keywords, um, query type of keywords, questions um, type of keywords. It's all differential based on your individual marketing strategy and the products you're marketing. But you need to understand the principles of keywords because if you don't, you will struggle. Um, and, it, and it can kill your entire campaign. Trust me, it can, it can derail your entire campaign. If you do want a bit more on keywords, I can discuss that in maybe a future video. Um, these videos have taken quite a long time to set up anyway, but um, if you do want another one, make sure to comment that down below as well. Um, and any other videos, I do take these into consideration to really try and uh, to try and help you there. So those are the prerequisites that you need to just at least keep in mind. These are the foundation. Okay, we haven't even really started even getting impressions and clicks yet. That's how much work we have to do and understand. And this is just realistically a broad overview. There's a lot more to it um, than than this, but this is going to get you started. So here's a bit of the strategy. Okay, so now you understand the foundation. You've got the strategy. You need to set up a standard shopping campaign. So there's standard shopping and then there's smart shopping. I don't recommend doing a smart shopping straight off the bat um, for two reasons. One, it, I generally find it works better if you have a standard shopping. Two, you really need to understand how a standard shopping works to effectively understand how a smart shopping is working. It's ed Your education is super important. Every day I'm educating myself going through, I always have a book and a course that I'm always reading and that I'm always learning. I'm learning every single day, no matter where you are in your journey. And so I recommend to everyone that you should always start with standard shopping. You're going to lose a bit of money. Yep. Sorry to say you are going to lose likely to be money on a standard shopping for the first few weeks and then it kicks off because Google is very different to Facebook. You want to first market to the United States and why? Obviously, it's the highest converting country and it's not overly expensive yet. And if you can optimize your campaigns properly, it's always going to be quite cheap. Um, it's going to get more competitive, but it's always going to be quite cheap. And it's really easy then to go international 
uh, to Canada, Australia, UK, New Zealand. Um, I don't really go past those, if I'm honest anyway. Um, but start in the United States. You want to set your bid to a max CPC of at least a dollar based on the USD. So for me, here in Australia, I'd set it to, if my ad account was in Australia, which it is, a dollar thirty max CPC. Now, I am actually, um, a bit of a side note, working on a formula uh, that I'm learning that allows you to understand how you can actually set a max CPC that guarantees, or pretty much guarantees, that you're at minimum going to be break even and anything under it's profitable. That's what's amazing with Google. You can actually use the analytics to determine a break even CPC, which is awesome. I love that. Um, okay, so it is highly unlikely to get this. Oh, sorry. So it's highly unlikely to actually, so for me in Australian, hit $1.30. Generally, like for me in Australian, let's say it was about 60 cents American, it would be about 80 cents Australian. So you are going to get pretty cheap CPCs um, to, pardon me, to American traffic. Um, and uh, and it's always pretty much been that way. As long as you know how to optimize, um, and because again, shopping's all around the products and the keywords, and you'll be fine. Um, itemize your products by item ID. Um, we do this because we want to be more granular. With the shopping campaign, you have 50 products. You want to understand which of those 50 is doing well, which against which isn't, because we're just basically uploading an entire catalog and letting Google try and find us ideal customers. But we want to make sure that you know products that are doing well are being uh, prioritized, and products that are not doing well are being you know uh, not prioritized, killed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So make sure you do that. Um, because by default, it does it by category, and that's not really helpful for you. So make sure you have it by item ID. Um, it's super important you give Google time to optimize. So part of the actual strategy, as much as I'm sure many of us don't like to admit this, um, it, th this isn't like Facebook. Okay, I, I really want to emphasize on that. This isn't like Facebook at all, really. Um, where you get results within 24 to 48 hours, okay, or even sooner. Um, you know, depending on various results. It isn't like Facebook. Facebook can scale really high and then it's going to die off. Google may not be able to scale as high, but it can definitely, um, you know, it can provide you a more consistent stability. And that's what I'm trying to emphasize on here. Um, but so Google, Facebook can go like that. And then this Google sort of goes like that. And then it's going to, depending on where you're at, it'll, it sort of plateaus and stabilizes. Okay. So Always keep that in mind um, if you are planning to do Google. Don't go into it thinking that this is the next next get rich quick scheme. It isn't. There's no such thing, especially in 2019 with the vast amount of competition. Uh, number eight, I recommend at least spending $20 a day. Okay, really important that you understand uh, why I say this. If you're marketing 20 products, if you got your entire catalog pushed into Google and those 20 products, and let's say it was just 20 products, on on that basis of twenty dollars a day, you know one product can uh, might only get one or two clicks, and how can you adequately say that that's uh, sufficient enough? Um, and so twenty dollars minimum a day. If you're running ten, then it would take you literally weeks to a month to even get probably some tangible data. It's just not enough. Um, a lot of people get the wrong idea um, that it'll be fine because we're, again we're just so used to Facebook, but if if you had fifty products, then twenty dollars a day is just it's gonna it's gonna be tough. It'll be tough. You'll probably look at it and be like, why am I spending twenty dollars a day? Um and I'm, you know, not getting results. And that's because most people look at it in a broad sense. They just look at the overall I've spent twenty dollars and I haven't gotten results. And they'll end up killing the campaign. But you have to be a lot more granular with that. Remember, you're marketing an entire catalog. Of course, when you go out, that entire catalog is going to be spread across different niches, keywords. And so that's why you need to go out, pay for the data, and then use the data to your advantage. Google is more of a numbers game. Okay, that That's why I like Google. Okay, if it's, it's a numbers game. And as long as you understand the tools, understand how to use them, and understand that it's a numbers game, you can nearly always be successful that is why I love Google. You just have to spend the money to get the money to, uh, and you can actually use it, right? So think of it like with Facebook where you test tons of products 
and for heaps of us, you know, I've had I've tested products and spent five hundred dollars, and it hasn't worked to test because um, some people say you need to spend more, some people say you don't, etc. It either works most of the time or it doesn't, and then you kill it and you move on. Whereas Google, it's probably not gonna may not work well to begin with, but then you can make it work well because of the nature of the platform, right? Because we're looking for people. Okay, we're not just giving it to Facebook and it's just going to try and find it. We we tell Google the type of people and it will explicitly, in most instances, go and do that for us. So that's really powerful. Um, again, you need to give the campaign. So at this point, you, you've got your campaign running and it's been a week. And then you've got, your camp uh, sorry, you've got your campaign up and running and it's just been a week to get your products approved and the campaign created. Then you need to wait at least a week before your actual campaign generally starts getting any tangible results. And I'm talking that you're gonna to have to at least have spent probably a hundred dollars, okay? So you're gonna at least have spent a hundred dollars because again, 20 products that are getting a couple of clicks each isn't isn't enough to determine if that product's a winner or not. Like, it's just not. So you need to give it time. So we're already at the two week mark before we've even gotten anything tangible, okay? So hence why Google takes time. Um, so again, it's all about keyword management. All right, so keyword for shopping, it's keyword management, search terms, and also the, the products themselves, okay? So, you know, and that's why I start out at max, max CPC. Um, and uh, so I can control the bids because some products may not do well, but if you reduce their bid, okay, that, that does mean that you might get fewer impressions, but those impressions that lead to clicks are cheaper clicks, and those clicks can then become become make a profit profitable product. Okay, so that's that's how it works in a numbers sense. Um, again, as I said, don't kill any keywords after five clicks. It's not recommended, preferably thirty minimum. So if you're spending fifty cents each, okay, um, you you want to have I don't know what that equates to fifteen dollars. Is that fifteen dollars? Yeah, um, so $15 you want to spend on a keyword. If it's doing okay and if it's relevant, um, it's all circumstantial. And that's why I talk about people don't seem to understand the different types of keyword intents. So let's say I was saying that um, buy dog collar. Okay, that's a shopping or purchase buying intent. Okay, someone's out there already showing that they have intent to buy it. They just need to determine where from and why. If the if the one was um, how, uh, let's say, um, uh, how to make a dog collar and your ad rank, well then it's unlikely to, to either get a click or either um, if it does to do well because it's a, not the right type of keyword. That person is is trying to determine, find an answer. So they're trying to maybe look at a blog post, a thread, Reddit, um, tons of different things out there, but they're not in the mood to really buy. They're trying to find an answer to their problem. All right, so that's why Google you know, is very different. We all do it. We type questions into Google to find answers and you know, and Google's gonna show, try and do its best to show us the answer we want. So we as the marketers need to understand that that's how Google works. And Google wants to only show our ads um, if it makes sense and if we're a good um, a good merchant, okay, a good marketer. Otherwise, they're, they're not going to rank you really at all because they don't want crap. Um, so I've already said that. Um, and you also lastly need to understand, not so much with shopping, but it is really important to note, quality score is quite important. In fact, it's probably actually the most important above keywords. Similar. Uh, you need keywords, obviously, to get impressions and clicks, but you need to understand that quality score is actually what Google defines as the most important um, element. Why? Um, I only learned this recently, but back in 2005, there was no such thing as quality score. It was um, introduced thereafter. Um, and but at, back at that point in 2005, Think of it like this, that I as a marketer could say my budget is $20 a day and my bid is $3. And if I um, knew that you know everyone else was bidding $2, my ad would show first. It was as simple as that. It was purely based on budget and bid. 
what happened as a result in, in different industries like the finance, legal, pharmaceutical, um, I can't remember the other industries. Um, there was a lot of scamming going on and illegitimate businesses taking advantage of people, um, you know, sending them to spammy, crappy, scammy websites. And what, what does that happen to Google? That that means people don't want to use it. It means trust is going down the line, isn't it? It means that people are not going to trust Google um, because they, they don't want to buy, uh, they don't want to use them knowing they're going to be sent to possibly these crappy pages. So Google took a step back, okay, understandably, and it's like, well, what can we do to, to fix this? Because there's always going to be people out there doing scammy crap things, which is the same everywhere. So they brought in the quality score system, okay? So Facebook um, have the relevancy score, which is actually becoming more important somewhat, but nowhere near as important as quality score for Google. So um, I could go into an entire lesson and it's actually very, very complex as to how you even understand quality score. But understand that it's really important. It's ranked one to 10, one being lowest, 10 being highest. If you are 10, you're gonna get uh, the cheapest clicks in theory. Uh, because you have a high relevancy add to what the customer is looking for for that type of keyword possibly. So that's why that's really important. Google want to try and when people search something, they Google want to show ads that are relevant from start to finish. So the ad is relevant to what they were searching and then the landing page is relevant and their experience on your website is relevant. And that's where they also use your conversion tracking to determine that. So if you're getting a lot of sales from this keyword, you might get a higher um, quality score because it's like, well, people are clicking and they're liking your website, liking the product, what you're offering. And then it's going to rank you higher and it's going to actually be cheaper. All right. And there's ways you can actually improve that as well. And there's ways you can actually determine it. Your quality score is super important. Uh, now, keep in mind, it doesn't mean you have to be at the top of the page as well. Anyway, that's a whole nother discussion. But I wanted to at least discuss that so you understand because not many people even think about quality score um, as a legitimate stat. All right, so that that's pretty much like a broad overview of the strategy. I would just start $20 a day, max CPC, your entire catalog, and like making the campaigns as easy as pie. I have that in another video. Go watch it. I've got my playlist link down below. Um, it's going to give you a ton of information, 100% free, so you're welcome. Um, uh, but anyway, further to this, uh, again, I just want to reiterate, focus on optimization of the keywords, ad groups, ads, and the bidding strategy. They all contribute. Please always, generally, as a general rule, start at max CPC. It gives you the most control, means the most work, but it's really important in the beginning for your education um, and to manage your budget more effectively because I know many of us are on uh, tight budgets and I respect and get that entirely. So make sure you keep that in mind. Uh, always give Google time again. You know, generally, after a successful campaign, it'll be about 30 days for me. Um, I like to give 30 days. It sounds like a lot of time, which it is. Don't get me wrong. But Google always optimizes by default on a 30-day window. I know a lot of people that don't really properly optimize campaigns until 60 days. And they're spending like $200 a day. And they will be doing some optimization, but they're not going to be doing serious until they get those big numbers because they know that they're going to dip and then it's going to improve once they have all that data and that as long as you understand how what that data means and how you can use that data in the form of using Google Ads to your advantage, then you can it'll go down and then it's just pretty much nearly an upward trend. An upward trend, okay, so that that's the secret to Google. Um, again, that's why I made this. I recommend for people running shopping to begin with. So always run a standard shopping, over time smart shopping, single product shopping campaigns. Um, and then you want to try other things like display ads, Gmail, YouTube, search ads. There's a lot of different types for e-commerce. But start with shopping because it is actually the easiest. Um, it's a lot more autonomous. Um, and it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg. Um, again, it's all about the bids, price, quality score. If you do understand this, you'll be fine. For students of mine, for instance, in the course and that, um, they all know that I'm really adding a lot more stuff purely centered just around all of this um, as I'm really trying to explain that in depth. I like to, because you really need to understand Google at a very 
foundational granular level um, because if you don't, then you're not going to be successful. That's why people use Facebook ads because you don't need to have that granular understanding as much and you can build it up over time um, generally. So, you know, you can easily start a campaign, ad sets and a product and, and launch it. And that's what people like because it's very easy learning curve. And that's why they don't like Google because it's actually, if you don't have that foundation to begin with, well, then it's likely that it's just going to start here and it's going to go down and you're going to quit. All right. Whereas with Facebook is that because it's a very easy learning curve, it it's not going to go down like that. It can just easily go up and then you just work on it. Um, but I, I, I don't know. Once once you get into Facebook, you'll sort of see what I mean. Um, and lastly, for those who are wondering how I do research, and I will be making a future video on this uh, specifically around Google. Um, I've done some before, but some updated ones. I use Salesforce again, as many of you know, really good for product research period um, and uh, really, really good for Google. Drop point again, really good for, for Google. Big Spy, again, it has an entire section just for Google, which I'll be going into. Comma feed, again, so that I can find other products that are being marketed on Facebook that I can market on Google. Okay, so um, start with those as well um, to get an idea. So like Salesforce is paid. It's more expensive, but it's a really, really good app. Drop points are more cheaper paid alternative. Big Spy is free and comma free comma feed is free also. So keep that all in mind um, as well. You can start with those to you know, because you've all pretty much seen me use them, but I'll, I'll show you in a more Google, Google sense because uh, Google products have different variables and we need to understand um, what products that we can try and market on Google because it's a very different natured platform. And that concludes today's Google Shopping free course for beginners. I hope you did enjoy today's video. Don't forget to like today's video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more weekly value that I deliver, course value that no one else is delivering. Make sure that you comment down below as well, crush it. To go on the chance to win a 30 minute call with myself. Congratulations to today's winner, Cantona SRB. I apologize for the little mistake there. Just contact me, ricky at rickyhayes.co, and we will have our 30 minute call together. Make sure, as well, if you are interested in product research, there's Salesforce there as well, and obviously the link for my uh, YouTube channel to subscribe. Over 150 videos. I seriously recommend going and watching them. You're going to learn all about Facebook ads, you're going to learn all about Shopify, you're going to learn all about product research, you're going to learn all about Google Ads, you're going to learn all about how to build a brand. And that's what my channel is centered around, is really trying to help build something long term, sustainable, yours, no one else can steal it. Okay, that's what this is about. So um, I hope you did enjoy today's value. Um, I hope you have a lovely day. Take care and good